Let's take a look at an airbrush that I've been getting a lot of requests for. This is the Iwata Revolution HPCR. In the box, you get an Iwata sticker. You also get some very basic documentation like this quick start guide, and also a sheet of paper that has a spray pattern of your airbrush, which they tested at the factory. Besides the airbrush, you get a very small wrench that you could use to remove the nozzle, and a small bottle of Iwata lube. A small amount of lube on the needle helps it glide through the needle packing screw a bit easier. The airbrush itself, just like every other Iwata I've reviewed and owned, feels exceptionally well built. If you've owned any other Iwata airbrushes before, like the Eclipse or the Micron, you'll know what I'm talking about. It has some nice weight to it, it's extremely comfortable to hold, and in the hand it's obvious that this is a professional painting tool. The Iwata Revolution looks and feels very similar to this airbrush, which is the Iwata Eclipse, but it has a slightly different design and a larger nozzle, making it better suited for spraying thicker paints like base coats, primers, and opaques right from the bottle. The Iwata Revolution has a larger needle and nozzle size at 0.5 millimeters. Again, this is much larger than the Eclipse, which has a nozzle size at 0.35. The needle is aligned perfectly within this nozzle, and the airbrush itself has a very nice chrome finish to it. No sort of blemishes or imperfections, so it's very nice to see. The rear handle is plain, no sort of extra features like a trigger stop on the back or a cutout to flush the airbrush. I actually prefer this because while those features might look cool, they really don't add much while you're painting. But if you like something like a needle limiter, just understand that this airbrush does not come with it. The Revolution also has Iwata's standard round trigger. It's a simple design but extremely comfortable for long painting sessions and the inside of the cup has a nice finish to it where it kind of funnels down at the bottom so the paint could flow directly to the nozzle so let's move along to the next part which is going to be the breakdown so that you could see the internal parts after removing the rear handle the needle and the chuck we can unscrew this part right here which is the needle housing you can also use this screw to adjust the trigger tension and just as a reminder you generally want to keep this down toward the tighter side that's going to create a better seal with the needle and the nozzle but if you unscrew it all the way, you're able to remove this spring assembly. The trigger lever is connected to this part, which I love. It just makes it so much easier to break apart. And this assembly consists of three parts, the guide, the spring, and the housing. It's a simple design, which I really like, extremely durable, and it's going to last for many, many years. The trigger is the same one that you'll see in the Iwata Eclipse. It has a hinge on it with a small metal guide that depresses the air valve assembly when you press down for air. And moving along to the front of the airbrush, the first thing we have is this needle cap. That cap is just used to protect the needle tip and it's up to you if you want to spray with it on or off. And after unscrewing the air cap, the nozzle itself is the traditional screw-in design. Now I never recommend removing this unless you absolutely need to, like there's a clog in it that you just can't get out. But if you need to unscrew this, you could use that small wrench that comes in the box or better yet you could buy this tool made by Iwata. This nozzle wrench has a cutout in it which helps hold that nozzle in place as you unscrew it so it just makes it easier. Iwata doesn't include any quick adapters like this one that I have on my airbrush right now so if you use them you're gonna have to buy it separately. But at the bottom you have the air valve assembly and you could use a tool like this to unscrew it if you need to. Again just like the nozzle if you're new to using an airbrush this is a part that I don't recommend removing. So all in all, the build quality and the finishing on the Iwata Revolution is excellent. It's an Iwata, so this is what I expected to see. Now I've decided to stop showing and measuring spray angles in my reviews. I've started to notice that some people, especially new airbrush painters, just think that a narrow spray angle means a thinner line. And that's never been the case, as I've said many times. While it's definitely true that a narrow spray angle can definitely help you paint thinner lines, the main factors that will determine your line thickness is the distance from the surface you're painting, the airspeed, which is relative to PSI, your paint consistency, and airbrush control. So take a look at this piece of paper here. These are the thinnest lines I was able to paint. Two of these were painted with the Iwata Revolution, which remember has a needle size of 0.5. And the other two were painted with my Iwata Custom Micron Takumi. The Micron is four times the price and has a needle and nozzle size more than half that of the Revolution at 0.18 millimeters. Let me know if you're able to tell which lines were painted with the Revolution and which lines were painted with the Micron. Because to me, looking at this now, 
I can't tell the difference. Lines 1 and 2 were painted with the Iwata Revolution, and lines 3 and 4 were painted with the Micron Takumi. And of course, here's the video of me painting with both, just so you can see that I'm not making this up. To paint a thin line like this with the Revolution, I dropped the PSI down to around 15, and I diluted the paint about 50% with distilled water. But the main factor is the distance that I'm holding my airbrush from the paper. As you can see, I have the tip of the needle here almost touching the paper. So really close like that is always going to give you fine detail. It doesn't matter which brush you're using. Moving along to the Micron Takumi with the same PSI and paint reduction, I can paint in the exact same size line. Nozzle size and spray angle can help you paint more detail just because the airbrush is spraying a lower volume of paint, giving you some more control. But all of this is always secondary to your technique. So going back to the zoomed in video of these lines, it almost looks like the second line, which was painted with the Revolution, looks to be the smallest. But again, none of this really matters. Just remember that if you want to paint thin lines, the key to it is being very close to the surface you're painting, dropping your PSI, and reducing your paint so that it sprays evenly out of that nozzle at the low pressure. But with that much larger nozzle size on the Iwata Revolution, it's going to spray out a higher volume of paint, meaning that you're going to get much better coverage and it's going to be a lot more forgiving for spraying thicker paints. But with that higher volume of paint, it's much more difficult to paint in details just because it's very easy to accidentally spray too much paint. Moving along to the trigger response rate, this airbrush is very good. All I have to do is just slightly nudge that needle backwards and I get paint at the same point every time. This feels pretty much identical to the Iwata Eclipse to me. Testing the consistency of the spray pattern, it's very good. We can see that this is a continuous line. There's no jitters, no breaks in it. So very good job. And with the needle fully retracted, you can see that this airbrush really puts out a high volume of paint. And checking the airspeed, this one is definitely on the higher side because of that nozzle and head design. I get an airspeed right at around 6 meters per second. From my measurements, this is identical to the Iwata Eclipse, which again is going to make it great for spraying some thicker paints. Checking the nozzle for air leaks, I'm just placing some soapy water on the nozzle while I'm pressing down for air. No bubbles, so that means there's no leaks. This is always a great thing to see, so I'm very happy with this. Subtle air leaks around the nozzle threads is unfortunately pretty common in a lot of airbrushes. Iwata just released this new thread sealer, which is a type of beeswax. So if you want to pick this up, you could place it on those nozzle threads and it'll seal it right up. Moving along to the more subjective part of this review, I switched over to the Revolution from my Iwata Custom Micron Takumi while I was working on this portrait. I thought I was going to use this airbrush for a few small parts and then go back to the Takumi, but I absolutely loved how this sprayed. I mainly use it toward the end of this painting as I was painting in this hand, and because it was a larger area, this did such a great job at getting in all the detail I needed. The major thing that I noticed is that I really needed to be careful not to pull too far back on the trigger because, again, this airbrush puts out a lot of paint. It puts out a large volume. So when painting a larger area like this hand, which has a lot of flat textures on it, this actually was a better airbrush to use than the Micron because it helped me spray an even layer of paint over a larger area. And another thing that I loved is what you see on all Iwata airbrushes, and that's the trigger control. Even though this revolution was putting out a lot more paint than I'm used to, the control was still there. If I were painting in smaller detail areas, maybe like parts of the eye, I definitely would choose the Micron over the Revolution just because it's a lot more forgiving. But if I were to start this portrait over and only had the Revolution, I'd be very happy with it. It would do a great job on advanced paintings. And one of the best things about the Revolution is that it's one of Iwata's least expensive airbrushes. You could buy this one at any airbrush dealer for around 100 US dollars. But if you look around and you have some patience, you could usually buy this one on sale. I picked this up in January for 80 US dollars, which included shipping. I bought mine on Amazon and I'll leave an affiliate link for the one I bought down below. This is one of the few Iwata airbrushes that I've seen go on sale from time to time. But even at that normal price of 100 US dollars, I think this is a fantastic deal. There are so many great airbrushes on the market today, and the Iwata Revolution comes in at such a great price point. You're getting a professional airbrush that could do almost anything. And not that brand name matters, but it's an Iwata, which means it has amazing build quality, a very good warranty, and trigger control, which is second to none. So if you're thinking about picking this one up, you won't be disappointed with it. Thanks for watching.